Arizona will not meet the deadline for our drought plan. State officials say Arizona will not have all of the pieces of the Colorado River drought plan in time for the federal deadline in March. Officials say about half of the 15 agreements will be in place by then. And they hope to have the rest finished within 60 days. Arizona and California are the only states out of our seven whose plans are not finished. We're learning more tonight about the deadly scene in Oro Valley. Police have identified the woman who died exactly one week ago. They found 40 year old Lori Dragath dead in her home near Lambert and Pushview Lane. They also found two school age children inside the home. Police say they're investigating the death as suspicious, but won't call it a crime. They say there's no threat to the public and are not releasing any more information. Continuing coverage tonight on the murder of a Nogales police officer. We're learning that today that the prosecution will seek the death penalty. Last April, police arrested David Ernesto Murillo after he allegedly shot and killed Officer Jesus Cordova. It happened during a carjacking investigation, and prosecutors filed this notice of intent on February 14th to seek the death penalty. Murillo is facing first-degree murder. An update now on a child porn case. The man you see here will spend the next 50 years in prison. Kevin Frazee was found guilty on five counts of sexual exploitation of a minor. Once Frazee is released, he must, must register as a sex offender. New tonight at 6, the Bisbee City Council plans to discuss the controversial concertina wire lining parts of the Arizona-Mexico border. It's on their council meeting agenda set for tonight. It says discussion and possible approval of a resolution denouncing the use of concertina wire as an unauthorized border crossing deterrent. This comes after the Nogales City Council already approved a resolution denouncing the wire. You can hear both sides from city officials and from CBP on the concertina wire on our website. KGON9.com. When teachers aren't available, schools call substitutes. That's right, the journey and passion behind one veil substitute teacher. You're watching KGON9 on your side. Tonight, Vail School District says its substitute teachers play a vital part in covering for teachers who are out of the classroom. Right now, they have more than 130 subs, but ideally, it says they'd like to have between 175 to 200 substitute teachers. Now, those subs step into the front lines when needed and can be responsible for dozens of children at a time. So what does a day in the life of a sub look like? Well, tonight, Nine on Your Side's Ivan Rodriguez has a behind-the-scenes look at one Vail substitute teacher. You are coming back to hang out with me. How you doing, buddy? For the last seven yeah, years, Tina doing? Henderson has been a substitute yeah, a teacher. Day? Come on in. Everybody have a seat at table two, okay? Henderson began her career in the business sector. It wasn't until her kids were born that she found her love for teaching. I've done a lot of things with my church um, where I worked with lots of children and youth groups. And so it was just really natural. I love children. She can still remember the first morning she was called to sub. And it was a second grade classroom. So they are seven years old and they can intimidate you. <laughs> but they were great. I walked in and we got settled in and we started, you know, going through our routine of the day. Then it was fine. Once there was a little orange cat who lived in a patch of weeds at the end of a garden. Even though she's a substitute teacher, Henderson still holds herself to a high standard and understands the responsibility she carries by being a leader in the eyes of children. What do you think about Ginger the cat? They have to know that they are loved and that they are in a safe place and that they're cared for because beyond teaching academics, teachers have a responsibility and they take it very seriously to teach life skills. But this little girl decided she chose to be kind, right? She decided to look past all of that and think, you know what? I think he needs somebody to love him. When the bell rings and students head home, Henderson says she's reminded of why she began teaching in the first place. When I leave, I feel like I made a difference in somebody's life that day. To learn more about how to become a substitute teacher with the Vail School District, visit our website. Ivan Rodriguez, KGUN 9, on your side. Three cheers for mm, subs exactly because it is right. a difficult job mm -hmm. at times. Let's check in with Kyler Diggs right now. And uh, he's insisting on telling us about these freezing temps, but we don't really want to hear it. <laughs> I know. Yeah, and we're going to have to probably hear it again before this is all over. The sun is going down, skies are clearing, temperatures are going down, hard freeze warnings in effect. 
Also coming up, Tucson's new pro football team giving us a sneak peek at their new field, the Sugar Skulls Indoor Turf Ahead Sports. You're watching KGUN 9 on your side. Now, KGUN 9 on your side. First warning weather with Kyler Diggs. Here's the high temperatures, if you can call it that, this time of the year across southern Arizona today. We saw a lot of 50s on the map, some 40s too. 51 degrees in Tucson at the airport. And for those of you who are new to the area or maybe visiting, we should see these daytime highs approaching 70 degrees at this time of the year. So yeah, it is way below average on the high temperatures, but it wasn't too cold for me and April Madison to visit the Highlands at Dove Mountain this afternoon. Lifelong learning in retirement was the club we were enjoying spending time with this afternoon and we were talking weather and not only cold weather. We were talking about the monsoon, which really is not that far away when you look at the calendar, but it sure doesn't feel like it right now. And we want to thank the folks at the Highlands for having us visit this afternoon. Right now, 48 degrees in Tucson, 36 degrees in Oracle, 54 in Phoenix, and 41 degrees in Douglas. Overnight tonight, we will see clear skies. That's playing a key role in why we're seeing these temperatures drop off so much. And by early tomorrow morning, down below freezing, by the time the sun comes up, we will see those overnight lows dropping into the upper 20s for most of the region. Hard freeze warnings in effect. That does include Tucson on and vicinity. Green Valley and Saurita's in there too. And as I mentioned earlier, we're not the only ones feeling the chill these days. Even Phoenix is under a freeze warning tonight with temperatures expected to drop into the 29 to 32 degree range. Well, right now, we're already down to 22 in Albuquerque, 18 at Window Rock, into the 20s there at the Grand Canyon and Flagstaff. And we're seeing these 50s all the way over to the California coastline. So there's a big chill across most of the country. Look at this, the high today in Bismarck, 4 degrees, 22 in Minneapolis, only 39 in Dallas. Look at this big storm moving through the central and southern plains. A lot of moisture being pulled up out ahead of that. Scattered showers and some strong thunderstorms to the south and some pretty heavy snow to the north all the way from Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas into Missouri, and then we've got this big trough of low pressure parked right over the southwest. Little impulses of energy continuing to create a few isolated snow showers over the higher elevations of southeastern Arizona, but that'll move out of here tonight. We get one break a day of a break and then here comes another storm system into southern Arizona. This one will pack some more moisture with it. In fact, we'll see snow levels dropping down to 3000 feet. So Friday morning, maybe a little bit of uh, rain snow mix in Tucson, but the big one with this winter storm watch is already in effect and we could see up to three feet of snow in some of the high mountain areas of southeastern Arizona. Yeah, you heard me right. Three feet of snow. But tonight, there you go. As I gave you a tour there of the temperatures we expect overnight, lows into the teens and 20s. And then for tomorrow, still chilly out there with highs only topping out into the 50s, mid 50s around the metro area. And we're only going to see 40s on Friday. And then finally, the 60s return next week. Let's return over to Pat Paris right now. All right, Kyler Diggs, thank you. You're looking at a time lapse right now from today at the Tucson Arena and the Sugar Skulls laying out the new indoor football field for the very first time. The turf fits inside the dimensions of the hockey boards, which make up the out of bounds. Fields 50 yards long, eight yard end zones. There'll be 10 foot wide goal posts at each end as well. The time lapse covers over four hours of work to install the field. Tucson's new indoor football league team kicks off the season in 12 days on the road at San Diego, but there's plenty going on right now to get the Sugar Skulls inaugural season started. That includes laying out the turf for the first time as we showed you and going on right now at the TCC. Season ticket holders are being given the opportunity to see the new gray turf plus their